Hi everyone and welcome back to the bench. When we are working on electronics projects, especially if the project requires us to go outside, one of the biggest challenges is how do we power that project because here on the bench we have access to our trusty bench power supply and we can provide a very precise voltage and a limited current to whatever we are working. But out in the field, in most of my tests, I'm relying on power banks and they are quite limited to just five volts and we need additional hardware to provide different voltages and uh, different current rating. So in this video, I'm gonna use this device. This is the Pocket PD. This is a variable power supply that can trigger the PPS or programmable power supply protocol on some of the chargers and power banks that they have. And this is a little board that I'll use in combination with my tool batteries to create a portable power supply that I can vary in voltage and current and I can use out in the field. The Pocket PD uses a protocol called PPS or programmable power supply that some of the newer and most modern chargers have that can provide a variable voltage with a limited current. In this case, 3.3 up to nine or 11 volts at a maximum of 2.75 amps for a total of 25 power output because this is a 25 watt charger. But because the USB protocol is the same, there are charges that can go up to 100 watts and the Pocket PD uses that protocol to trigger the actual circuitry in the charger without using any conversions and without using any inductors on its own. So it stays cool and it can regulate the output without having to regulate the current on its own. If we plug it in to the charger, we're gonna be greeted with the, its animation and also we're gonna be asked to select the profile that we want to use. Here on the list, I have all of the profiles that the charger provides specifically. So five, nine, 12 and 20 volts, but also because it supports PPS, I can select that by long pressing on the selector here and from the side. And I can vary the output voltage anywhere between the allowed range. So from 3.3 all the way up to 11 volts. And if we turn that on, we're going to see that now we have close to 11 volts in the output and we can turn that off if we want to. For example, if we want to have, let's say, 7 volts, if that's something specific, I can trigger that. And with my meter, we're going to try and verify that we actually have that on the output. So it says 6.95 and the meter says 6.9 if we go out you can see that we get exactly the same voltage as on stated and if we turn that off that's gonna go to zero and we can turn that on back again to the set voltage now unfortunately i don't have a power bank that support pps so if i plug it into the pocket pd i'm gonna get the message that no profile is detected so we're gonna be stuck with just the five volts that we are getting from the power bank and we can turn that on and off but this is not useful because now we are not in a mode that we can adjust the output so in this video i'm gonna use this board this is a usb pd converter board that's based on the xpm 52c chip that can get up to 30 volts on the input and provide the pps output for uh, whatever we have connected on the output. In this case, it's gonna be the pocket PD that we can then use to regulate and get whatever voltage that we need out in the field. As a suitable power source out in the field, I'm gonna use the PAR2 batteries that I already own. This is the P20S that some of the Chinese tool manufacturer use, and I have an adapter for that. And this is the 20 volts from Park side that uh, is distributed through Lidl and I've printed these two covers. I'm gonna have links to the models down in the video description if you want to check them out. So I'm gonna use these adapters to provide power to this board that we can then use to either use the pocket PD to get a variable power supply out in the field or just use the 
uh, PD65 watts board to charge any electronics that we need out in the field. And before we start the actual build, I want to thank today's sponsor, which is Altium Develop. If you build electronics, you know how complicated collaboration can get. Different tools, endless meetings, and version chaos that slows everyone down. Altium Develop changes that. It's a cloud platform built for real co-creation, bringing electrical, mechanical, software, and sourcing teams together in one shared space. Instead of jumping between disconnected tools, everyone works on the same data in real time. Designers can create schematics and PCBs, procurement teams can manage parts and pricing, and manufacturing can review designs before production, all in one place. Every change, comment, and decision stays in context, so no one's left guessing. You can track progress, manage requirements, and resolve issues before they become problems. No silos, no delays, just clear, connected teamwork that keeps projects moving fast, where it's easy to bring the right people into the process whenever you need them. If you're ready to move from working together to working as one, check out Altium Develop at the link in the video description. Now to make the adapter work and provide electrical connection, I cut these small metal tabs that uh, I'm gonna first rough up on one end because we'll need to solder some wires to it. So the solder will stick better if it's a rough surface. I'm using steel wool to just scratch the end and I've created a mess. And to align them properly, we can slide them into the appropriate contacts. Luckily, both batteries that I have have their contacts marked with the polarity. So please be sure to check that before you attempt this on your own. I have this slightly angled up because there is a small lip here on the end that we need to account for. And I'm gonna try to just push this in to have the tabs sticking out. And now we can use our soldering iron to just solder some wires to it and apply a generous amount of uh, super glue so we keep those tabs in place as they are. I'm using one of the batteries to have this angled slightly so it's better and more accessible. I'm gonna add just a tiny bit of extra flux and using the soldering iron, I'm gonna try to apply some solder. That seems to have worked. And before I actually connect the right wire, I need to check the polarity just to be sure. Here we know that this one here where we added the solder is the positive and the other one is the negative. Um, because if we had it other way around, the voltage that we measure will be in minus. If you can see that. So this means that you have the leads reversed. And if we add them correctly, you're gonna see the positive voltage as it should be. So we know that the red wire goes to this side. And since we need to be really careful not to short the battery, I don't have the other side of the cable exposed. So we're gonna be dealing with it later on. Now let's connect this wire to the tab. Okay, and let's do the same on the other side. To secure them in place, I'm gonna add some super glue so we know that they stay in place. Okay, and on the other side. And I did the exact same thing on the other battery, but now because of displacement, the wires are sticking up a bit and there is no cover for that hole because there is none. So we'll need to figure out how we're gonna be doing the wire handling after the glue dries. And to keep everything nice and tidy, I also found and printed this little cases for the modules. This can slide in like so, and they should align perfectly with the USB here on the front, like so. And we can add the cover as soon as we solder in the wire. So let's do that. I'm gonna start with this one and then 
I'm gonna place this probably like so or maybe no but yeah probably on the side so we can plug in the USB on the side. And so I have the first one ready and I've soldered the second one to get the cables neatly inside. I actually had to cut this piece from the model. So I'm gonna use my snips to carefully trim it off because that is actually hitting the wires and preventing this from closing all the way in. The model is actually perfect, but it doesn't account for the soldered wire. So I'm just cutting the tabs there. Let's put it inside. And to provide some strain relief on the cable, I'm actually twisting them like so. Okay, the wire is touching on the side. So you need to be very precise with your soldering and how neat everything is. Okay, let's try that again. Okay, that's better. The USB aligns. Let's push it all the way in. And we can add the cover by passing the cables through it and then pressing that in. And finally, we can glue on the module as we want to use it. I'm wondering if this will be okay for the cable. Yeah, it will be. So on this one, I'm actually gonna glue it like so. I'm gonna add just a drop of CA glue and we can press that in, making sure that it's centered. And we can call, hold it for about a second or so until the glue activates. And here are the two devices. There wasn't enough length of cable, so I add this on the front, but I added it to the side. And depending on the orientation, this could be a good thing. On this one, it was best to add it on top. So let's give it a try and connect the pocket PD. Let's select the variable mode. And now we have a power supply that we can adjust for whatever voltage that we need. Let's give it a try with some load. Let's power it on. And I have the cable coiled so you can see that it's powered from the battery. I'm gonna set this to Let's start with nine volts. I'm using some parlets that connect to an LED strip and let's give it a go. Okay, so at nine volts, we are drawing about 400 milliamp and we can start to increase that to the maximum of 12 volt. Actually this, because of the type of the load, this will not go anything above that, but one thing that I notice about the Pocket PD is the way how it handles the current limit. So for example, you can see that we currently have this set to one amp, but the because the voltage is a bit laggy and this uh, talking with the Central Labs, the company that makes the Pocket PD, they said that it could be the module that I'm using and it could be the cable that I'm using you see that this is a bit uh, below that. So even though we have it set at 12 volt, the actual output is 11.8 volts. And because the target voltage is not reached, the current is not limited. So we only get current limiting when the voltage is applied. And we can briefly see that if we reduce the voltage, so 
at 7 volt nothing lights up and as I increase it you're gonna see just a brief flashes between constant current and constant voltage and but again this is relatively good and this is good enough for what I need uh, on the field because I can set this to approximately 12 volt I barely ever need to have some current limit out in the field but for powering most of my projects this will work just fine and I can easily turn it on and off with the applied on button and just for the sake of completeness I now have the other battery and I can turn on and off same as I can with the other and we can have different type of voltage adjustment for what we need which will be perfect for the projects that we do and just like so we have two very powerful new tools in our tool bag that we can take with us wherever we go either to power electronics or to charge the phone rapidly if we ever need to so you can see this is now connected to turbo power and it's using the upgraded uh, power delivery protocols from the module to provide up to 65 watts of charging if the device supports it it only took us an afternoon to make the both uh, of the devices so i highly recommend that if you ever need a usb power source that you build something like this for your own battery there will be multiple adapters that you can find for the system that you use and also i'll highly recommend that you check out the pocket pd there'll be a link down in the video description where you can see it i didn't cover all of the features that it has like the short circuit protection and everything else that it comes with but you can read more about it down in the video description i'm gonna ask you to subscribe if this type of project is something that interests you I'll be definitely doing more project now in the upcoming year. So please do subscribe. Make sure to share the video with someone that can find the modules interesting. YouTube thinks that you're going to like this video next. And I'm going to see you all in the next one. Cheers.